diagnosed with a 20 degree scoliosis, what should you do? Scoliosis is a condition that involves the development of an unnatural sideways curvature, meaning the curve is bending, uh, the spine is bending from the front. This curvature needs to have a rotational component for it to be considered scoliosis. And for the diagnosis of scoliosis to occur, this angle needs to be 10 degrees or greater, and that's measured using a Cobb angle. Now, a Cobb angle is the gold standard in assessing scoliosis, and this is normally taken during a scoliosis x-ray. And a scoliosis x-ray is normally a frontal x-ray, and it normally includes the entire spine from the pelvis, lumbar, thoracic, and cervical spine. And it involves drawing li lines from from the top most tilted vertebra to the most tilted vertebra below in the curve. And these, the angle or the comparing the tilt of each of these two vertebras gives you a degrees, and degrees is what classifies the severity of a scoliosis. If that number is you know, smaller, it'll be considered a more mild scoliosis, and of course, if it's larger, it's considered more severe scoliosis. So in a Cobb angle, the larger the number means more severe. When the different levels of severity are normally broken down into four main categories. Mild scoliosis is a Cobb angle that's measures anything between 10 degrees and 25 degrees. Now, understand that this classification of scoliosis being mild, moderate, or severe is only related to the actual size of the Cobb angle, not always directly related to how it's affecting the body. And what I mean by that is some patients could have mild scoliosis between 10 and 25 degrees and have some severe effects, meaning pain or, or functional problems, which can lead to issues, but it's con still considered a mild scoliosis based upon the size. Uh, curves over 25 degrees, but less than 40 degrees are considered moderate scoliosis. And again, it's moderate based upon the size of the calm angle, not the necessarily the effect that it's having on the body. And then the uh, severe is anything greater than 40 degrees. So 40 degrees or greater is considered severe. Now, severe scoliosis is also related on the size of curvature. So some patients with severe scoliosis have no pain, have no problems or no malfunctions as a result of the scoliosis, but it still be considered severe. Now, I like to have a fourth category, which I call very severe scoliosis. Scoliosis. And this is when Cobb angles or the measurement of the scoliosis is greater than 80 degrees. Okay. Now, what a diagnosis of 20 degree scoliosis, what does that really mean? Well, the diagnosis means that it's classified as a mild case. Now, mild scoliosis doesn't mean it's going to stay mild forever. It doesn't mean it's going to have a mild effect on the body. All it means is that that moment of time when it was, x-ray was taken, the Cobb angle measured mild. But unfortunately, scoliosis is a progressive problem, meaning it's in its very nature to worsen over time. It can worsen in very partic particular times during growth, and it can also progress during adult stage if it's left untreated. So normally not treating scoliosis proactively normally means worsening. Normally you're gonna see an x-ray over time that's gonna worsen. Now sometimes it's gonna worsen slowly, meaning you're not gonna notice it year to year to year to year. But over a period of years, especially in the adult case, you may notice a significant progression, meaning 10, 20, 30 years later, you may notice significant progression. So the idea would be is normally the sooner you start to treat scoliosis, the better results you're going to get. So when should you treat mild scoliosis? In my opinion, the best way to treat scoliosis is as soon as you find it. Because every severe case, every significant case has always been mild at some point, meaning curves don't develop into a 40 degree curve overnight. They start off at five and progress to 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 50. Now the most progressive time of scoliosis is during adolescence, being this is when curves progress the fastest and this is when the curves are most likely gonna um, progress into rapid progression over time, meaning within months you can see 10, 15, 20 degrees of progression. And in this stage, when we see progression, normally the progression doesn't cause pain or doesn't cause malfunction, doesn't cause anything. Normally it only causes a postural deviation to become more significant. So if if you're not checking kids or kids are not checking their posture and they're saying, well, I can still do everything. I can still play sports. I can still participate in activities. They don't notice that their mild scoliosis is becoming more severe. In the adult stage, it progresses very slowly. Like I mentioned, it can progress one, one or two degrees a year. So year to year to year, not a lot of changes. But over 20 years, you can have 10, 15 degrees of change. And now this is starting to cause pain and dysfunction when it have been much easier to treat when it was much smaller. So therefore, treating curves smaller can always have a greater chance of dealing with a more severe curve later. So what does, what does this involve, actually treating a smaller curve? Well, treating a smaller curve, really you have to assess what do you think the progressive nature of the scoliosis is going to be, how flexible the, sco the scoliosis is, and how much reduction do you see is possible. In traditional treatment, 
the conservative treatment of a mild scoliosis is defined successful if it doesn't become severe enough for surgery. So meaning you can be diagnosed with a 20 degree curve. And let's say for that surgeon, surgical levels are 40 degrees. You can progress from 20 to 39 degrees and be one degree less than surgical. And in traditional treatment, that would be considered successful conservative approaches, even though your curve got 19 degrees worse. Now, obviously, I don't find that, I don't consider that successful because your curve actually progressed. But since they don't have any really good methods at reducing curves when they're small and they're really the only way they feel that you can reduce a curve is through surgical intervention, that's why my definition of success in treating mild scoliosis is not only do we slow the curve down, but I have much greater aspirations. We wanna see curves actually reduce as the response of the treatment. So therefore, in the assessment and how we wanna treat a mild scoliosis, the first thing we do is test flexibility. Now, across the board, most of the time, the smaller the curve will be more flexible in the same patient than as it gets bigger, meaning a 20 degree curve in the same patient more likely to be more flexible than if that curve would progress to 40 degrees. So therefore, since we know how flexible the spine is, is a direct indicator of how much reduction or improvement we can achieve in this person's body, we always recommend treating a small curve small when it's small because normally we can get a much better reduction we can take a 20 degree curve down to 10 or down to you know maybe even five where we're getting 50 to 70 percent reduction that same case progresses to 40 degrees now we're not looking at 50 75 percent reduction we're looking at 20 30 percent reduction so we never can get the same amount of change as curve worsens and this is because as it becomes not only does it become stiffer the body starts to adapt and starts to develop and starts to um, almost mold and almost deform around the scoliosis. So we're dealing more with just spinal position at this point. We're dealing with deformities that occur throughout the body and therefore treating it much smaller will give us a much better result. So therefore flexibility is one very key component. If we see small curves that are flexible, which the majority of them are, normally we, cut, we design customized treatment plans to help restore normal alignment, but not only slow the progression, but actually reduce the curve. And normally this is very specific with uh, condition-specific chiropractic care. We use the specific scoliosis in-office therapy and rehabilitation to help, help reduce the scoliosis. Even in mild curves, sometimes we even use corrective bracing to help push into scoliosis and remodel the body into a better position. And then we use customized prescribed home exercises that are also scoliosis specific. They're not general core strengthening or muscle strength based. They're designed in a structural manner to help reduce this curve. Now, the argument on the other side in traditional treatment options, meaning surgical approaches, meaning there is in a 20 degree scoliosis that what they're gonna be told is, well, 20 degree curves, we don't know how much they're gonna progress, so why treat them? And they are right. We Sometimes we take on a 20 degree curve and it is theoretically possible that curve will never progress greater than 20 degrees during growth. That's what they're saying. It doesn't mean it's not gonna progress ever in the entire life. It just means in an adolescent stage, it may not progress to surgical level. So therefore their thinking is that we are treating a curve that's never gonna become surgical, so they consider it a waste of time. So therefore, the normally in mild cases in surgical treatment uh, options or traditional options, they recommend nothing. Our argument is if you take that 20 degree curve and reduce it to 10, there is no harm in making a small curve smaller because it's only gonna be, it's gonna help the person live a, a better life after they're completely done growing. But in the, and that's why they say in the traditional route that mild curves don't need any treatment. Here with Scoliosis Reduction Center, we definitely offer conservative treatment that's non-surgical, and this is the key, because remember me saying in traditional treatment options are normally handled by surgeons, and surgeons, their only treatment to reduce a curve is very invasive, where they have to use rods and screws in the spine to make the spine straighter. Well, of course, if that's your only, your only treatment option, you're gonna wait till your curve becomes severe enough to warrant that risky type of treatment. But if you're diagnosed with a 20 degree curve and you have a small and you have a treatment option that's not so aggressive or invasive, meaning it's not gonna impact them for the rest of your life and they can reduce their curve and make their spine straighter and be worked more proactively in a natural way to prevent a 20 degree curve from becoming more severe, but more importantly, taking a 20 degree curve and actually reducing it and making it smaller, of course you would choose that option. So therefore, the best thing to do with a 20 degree scoliosis is to proactively treat it and to treat it when it's small so you can get a very a, de a good reduction when it's small and never have to deal with the decision is, is this curve severe enough? Do I need to consider surgery? And you'll never have those options presented to you because your curve was 
treated at a much smaller level. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.